nothing left to lose now. Everything to prove now. As long as I'm alive, I'ma fight back. My fire never cools down. I'm about to catch fire. Welcome to the 805 Post Show, a big day of competition here at the Vans U.S. Open of Surfing. Hurricane Frank has not let us down. There's been plenty of waves on offer today, and we've had a lot of spectators there on the iconic Huntington Beach Pier, getting a little bit wet when those solid sets roll through the lineup, throwing some spray up to them and getting to witness the action as close as they could kind of possibly be to the lineup with a bird's eye view. Shannon Hughes here alongside Pete Mel and Kaipo Guerrero. Pete, your thoughts on today? Well, it was a physical event, which we saw from yesterday with Hurricane Frank. A lot of current and uh, some challenging conditions, which is exactly what we wanted to see. And I love that there was a bunch of runarounds once again, lots of different ways to catch their waves and moving up and down the beach. And so it was a challenging day and a lot of last minute heroics in those last five minutes. I mean, it was the theme of the day, Kaipo. Yeah, uh, well, we're going to see the, a shake-up on the leaderboard. We had some upsets today of some surfers that were pretty far, high up on the leaderboard on that Challenger Series ranking. So we're going to see stuff change, and uh, it's going to be some opportunity for some of the lower-ranked surfers. It's pretty wild, speaking of that leaderboard, because coming into competition, out of the top 10 surfers on the draw, nine of them are out. Ryan Callanan's the only one last in the draw of the top 10. Yeah, and it's a perfect uh, way for him to solidify a spot. You know, he wants to be back on that championship tour. He deserves to be there. Um, and this is an event I think that he could actually come out as a winner. So watch him being uh, one of the highest ranked surfers in that uh, leaderboard right now uh, and a great opportunity to solidify a spot. Solid. It's going to be exciting to see what happens the rest of the week. Just now, we've seen William Cardoso walk through with the win. Let's catch up with him and Louisa. Yeah, I'm just feeling this stokiness, if that's a word. <laughs> Panda, like, how was this heat for you? How did you read the waves? How did you navigate this, these conditions? I don't know. Just try to, to keep in what I'm doing. Uh, I had bad results before, uh, but here making me... Uh, good memories. Uh, I made final in 2014. Uh, never had a condition like today. This is the first time. It's so tricky, so hard. You need to run, you need pedal, you need to get a wave. So it's uh, like a triathlon. You make it like three, <laughs> three things in one surf contest. So uh, in the end of the day, the, the good things happen to me. I'm super stoked to, to be in the round 16 again. Uh, not be easy. Uh, I, I plan this be will be my last year in the in the Challenge Series and the whole KS. If I qualify, I qualify. I'm just gonna do CT, but probably Sakuarema or Haleiwa will be my last event. So I'm trying to enjoy every single event I can. Uh, I feel I was surfing great in the Gold Coast, mainly in Durban, but the results never came. Uh, I hope California bring that to me. So I'll be super stoked to to be in the finals. E deu Brasil! E deu Brasil aqui na última bateria. Você estava falando que você já pegou o segundo lugar aqui contra o Felipe Toledo em 2014. Está esperando essa sorte, mas a gente viu que você estava saindo ali, faltando quatro minutos, e o te fez correr. Como é que fica o coração nessas horas? Ah, eu sabia que eu tinha feito uma, uma, uma última onda boa. Ah, eu tive a decisão de vir até a areia, eu sabia que faltava pouco tempo. Mas é em respeito a todos os atletas, eu acho super importante a gente dar esse último sprint. É, é, faz da gente ter a certeza que está fazendo o trabalho certo e o toque do Will foi essencial. Tem me ajudado muito durante toda a semana e com certeza ele é um grande amigo e vai me trazer bons resultados aí durante essa semana. Sensacional, parabéns. I just said in português how he mentioned that in 2014 he got second place against Felipe Toledo here in these waters. And then... I mentioned like he was, you know, still four minutes to go and he was coming out of the water and we saw you for just running with him like now go back. And then he was just explaining, you know, sometimes in this moment it's all about the spirit of the sports and so, like to pay respect to the other, you know, contestants. They're in the water still. It's very important to have that last sprint and just be in the game. So pretty much and then he's moving forward. Here we go. Back to you guys. 
Thanks so much, Louisa. Wow, that's big news coming through from the Panda from William Cardosa. Yeah, uh, the fact that he's going to make his last run here on the Challenger Series. We've got a, a big event for in, in Brazil at Sacarema, but this is an event that he could do well. And I think that, uh, you know, he's in that round of 16. If he gets through a couple more heats uh, in those one-on-one -on -one parts, uh, I feel like he's going to get some points and we could see him back on the CT. I mean, that's the goal. Well, and that's what he's trying to quantify, right, is the fact that, hey, it's his last year on the Challenger Series. But if he does <laughs> end up in the top 10, we're going to see him on the CT. And regardless, he's had a great career. I mean, a lot of guys have a CT career without a single event win. The Panda had one. Yeah, so cool. It really is. So impressive. We could see him back on top, though, and then doing another lap around the sun and uh, competitive surfing next year on the championship tour. We'll see how he goes throughout it. Well, one of the big stories of today was an upset in local Kanoa Igarashi, 714 area code, two-time champion from 2017 and 2018. Here at the U.S. Open, goes down to yeah. Cole Hauschman and Tristan Goldbach. Yeah, and this was a, a weird heat for me. There was a lot of uh, special waves. I mean, we saw um, the youngster from Australia. Gosh, help me out with his name. Um, Kaius King. Kaius King, thank you. And he you know, had a great wave in this heat, but didn't come up with a big score. The two big turns that came from Cole, this was the first one that came in at a mid-range six. Kolo, uh, Kanoa had a very solid wave at the very end. This was a very crazy wave, one of the most exciting waves I think we saw all day long. I mean, just barely missing the piling. That came in at a 7-3-3. Gilboa, he pretty much made this one, but the fact, here's the wave I'm talking about. This one came in at a 6-4-7, uh, or actually a 6-1-7. Either way, it was a mid-six, and that was a great wave. Vince Cole, right after him, gets this one. Uh, a lot of speed into this maneuver here. This one came in a little bit higher than uh, Kaius King. So it was a, kind of a funky little heat, but either way, Cole was taking this uh, gift right here along with it, gets through that next heat in the last heat of the day, and now is in the round of 16. So congratulations to Cole. Yeah, taking out Kano Igarashi here on on his home court, essentially. Cole, Cole Hauschman walking through with the win alongside of Tristan Golbald. For Tristan, that was one of his career best results as well, building strength to strength. So great to see those two going through. And the style of Caius King bowing out of competition early. I always love enjoying and watching him surf. So that was a bit of a bummer to see him go down. Yeah, I mean, he's got a bright future, Caius King. I'm a big fan. And uh, as he was talking about, I think some of those numbers, although he needed a backup score, some of those numbers were a little bit un undercooked, in, in, in my opinion, for Caius King. I thought that was really good surfing. Uh, but that's that's the game that we play, you know? And I mean, and it, we leave it all out on the field. But congratulations to Cole Hauschman. The big kid from San Clemente is going to be uh, on to tomorrow's competition. Excited to see. So much more good action coming. Another big loss that we saw today was CT, former CT surfer Olympian in Julian Wilson. He went down to Japanese competitor Taichi Wakita. And uh, it was a, a pretty big upset for him going down to Arcal as well. And it was one of those heats that came down to that last minute. You know, uh, Tai Chi was able to get the wave. It was basically Kalanen and Julian for most of the heat, number one and two. But then at the very end, Tai Chi was able to get the score needed and turn the heat at the very end. Well, Arcal is doing the work right here. And this is a big opportunity. We talked about the top 10, nine of them out of competition. Nothing but upside for Ryan Kalman, and it's with surfing like that. He can take it all the way to the podium in this event, and that's what I feel that we got from the young Nova Castrian. Get him back on tour. I want to see more Arcal. Yeah, a huge result for Arcal. Even to see that emotion coming through from him, it's not something we see all that often, Pete. No, it's not. And this was that last move there by Tai Chi. Was able to get it, and uh, right at the end, he needed a score, was able to pull it off. It got the inside connection, which I think solidified the score. That's the kid, Taichi Mob. I'm telling you, second generation pro surfer. He's got a lot of talent, and I think he's really been flying under the radar, sometimes under even the shadow of his younger sister, Sarah Wakita. But Taichi coming through, that's a big one for Japan. And if he keeps on up, we're going to see him uh, at the pointy end of this competition, Pete. So solid. A, a great result for Taichi Wakita, taking that victory, getting another post heat interview. Arcal through as well. And uh, it's been a big day of surfing. We've seen some other surfers really go big, take to some good progressive maneuvers, throw in some good combos. One of them uh, is Emai Kalani Duvall. Pretty special to see him take out some great surfing. Hey, a lot of times it's in your head and it's the mental capacity. E Mike in his post heat interview said, hey, it's rare when I have a heat that I'm feeling freed up and I'm free, the, the performance level is accentuated right there. And that's exactly what happened in that heat. You called that heat with me, Pete. Yeah, we did. He built momentum through it, right? I mean, we saw that he was looking loose, looking free, but it just was happening pretty easily for him. And then it just got better and better for him. And this was a tough one, you know, in this three man heat, you got one loser, but ultimately uh, that's the type of surfing he's able to bring to this US Open. It's up in the lip, friends free. We saw him do this uh, again, up and over the lip, 
hits it hard, and then watch this, just an extra ounce of flip and flare. That's what he brings, that's his brand of surfing. Kaipo, we saw the two Hawaiians take out the Brazilian powerhouse in Mateus Hurdy. Mateus Hurdy, just so talented. He was in the game. He had actually Ezekiel out against the ropes, but this happened in the last 30 seconds. Zeke threw everything at it. He needed the score, and he got the score. He got the news on the beach right here, and that feels good for the big Hawaiian. On to the round of 16, Zeke Lau. Huge, huge results for both of those surfers looking for that requalification after missing out on the mid-season cut. Imai Kalani Devault and Zeke Lau advancing past Mateus Herde. Mate Mateus definitely one of those surfers we've been expecting huge results from. This will be a, an unfortunate bow out for him, from him early on, but we'll see more of him uh, in the rest of the season. We will, and uh, you know, at the end, he's one of those touted individuals that uh, you would expect to make the tour. He's already had some championship tour and success on the championship tour, so it won't be long. But the Hawaiians taking it down. Hawaiians taking it down, but I do want to mention that uh, we're going to see Mateus Herde on the championship tour, and it's, it's almost a guarantee. He's, he's, he's way too good to not be in the top echelon of the elite. It's going to happen. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, there's been so much that's going on around the Vans U.S. Open of surfing this week because we got a massive festival. And kicking off tomorrow, we actually open up the window for the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. But alongside of that, we've had the, the Duct Tape Festival boards on offer. There's some great hand-shaped boards in there. We got to see one from Holly Wan here on Host Set today, which was really cool, Kaipo. Oh, man. I mean, they're obviously hand shapes, uh, but it's, that's going to be fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what are you trying to say, Kaipo? Well, they're creative. They're hand shapes. What? I mean, that wasn't CNC'd. These are, these are boards that started just with a planer and a screen and some sandpaper finished off. Now, we got uh, Steve it, Van Doren cooking some hot dogs uh, tea. Yeah, and yeah, that's tradition here at this uh, Vans US Open of Surfing is to have Van Doren down there uh, cooking dogs but I mean that's probably the first time we've ever actually seen a surfboard manufactured on the beach here and ridden on the sands of Huntington Beach. Uh, I know we've had shaping boards but we've never actually had them glassed and finished on the sands here. Love it. Love everything that's been going down. All the creativity coming to it as well as some good traditional Huntington Beach hot dogs going down uh, around the Vans Village. Oh yeah and you know what the thing about the, the legacy and the family of the Van Doren Rubber Company, which is now Vans, and having Steve Van Doren here every single day flipping those hot dogs. He does it every <laughs> single year. I'm telling you, this guy's He committed. knows how to cook a dog. He knows how to cook a dog, but I just love the family atmosphere that you get over yeah. here. So true. Uh, it's been a crazy day of surfing. There's so many moments we could touch on for being the still house unbreakable top five, but we're going to kick it off with our number five moment. It was a very close call for the French surfer Tristan Golbald with the Huntington Beach Pier. Taking a look at those pilings there. Yeah, we already saw this, it. but this was uh, really sketchy. I mean, straight up into it right here. He notices, oh, wow, there's the tee. Had to negotiate it and dives off. And somehow he was able to not get a zero ding on a surfboard. No scratches whatsoever. He goes through the pier instantly. Gone. from video. We're like, where is he? And he comes around running. No worries. He had it made uh, with uh, exactly no dings and no scratches. Coming in at number four, it was Kolohe and Dino's tube this morning, coming through at a 5.67 pipes. Look at this, shacked and finds the little doggy door exit, Kolohe and Dino. And this was a point of difference. It's been turns and airs so far, and then the tube came into play. Unfortunately, Kolohe unable to advance out of that heat. Coming through at number three, Pete Jadson took to the turns. Yeah, he sure did. Seven and a five, six, seven. Yeah, he did. And uh, this was Jaddy just having fun. He had been paying attention to what the judges wanted to see out of the surfers, and he went out there and executed it. It was fun to see. I love watching Jadson get through a couple heats and build momentum. It was good for him. He's going to find his way into that uh, next day of competition in the round. Uh, he still has to get through, I think, the round of 24, but uh, good surfing in that earlier round. And taking the opposite approach into the air was Aton Osborne. Aton Osborne, and that was definitely a contender for the Flying Embers air of the day. Big, lofty, flat rotation. This kid's got talent, and he's got an air game as well. So fun to watch. Always A-10 Osborne taking to the air. Well, taking out the number one spot for the Stillhouse Unbreakable 5, Emi Kalani Deval, Vans team rider, takes it into the round of 16. Yeah, he did. And he put some excellent numbers up here. Put a 15.67, I think, two-wave T total. So the biggest of the uh, round, for sure. Biggest of the day. Um, so I, congratulations to him. I think the only surfer to actually eclipse him as far as point total was actually uh, Caroline Marks on the women's side. So uh, congratulations to Emi, building momentum. 
Took out an 817 and a 757 in that heat, and he's into the next round. We've got a huge day of surfing ahead of us tomorrow. It's been a good one calling the action alongside the two of you. Thanks so much for all the enjoyable heats. And we'll be back with so much more action tomorrow for the Vans US Open of Surfing. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning bright and early. Can we throw a shaka? <laughs> And we're setting up for another day here at the Vans US Open of surfing. Buckle in, get ready. One thing I can tell you is we got waves. Help me up, never let it fall. Help me roll like an animal. Back to the road. Watch out, cause I'm in my zone. But I don't care what you think you got. It's not fair what you think you got. That's how it goes. Watch out, cause I'm in my zone. A crowd and hometown favorite in Kanoa Igarashi has hit the water against Tristan Golbald. Oh man, watch out. That was so hectic. That was crazy. And an upset. Kanoa Igarashi, the two time U.S. Open champion, the local out of the draw. Here we go. Jaddy Baby up in the lip. Boom. Talk about clutch. You know why he's here at the Vans U.S. Open of surfing? Because he loves it. Loud with the buzzer oh, beater, he moves into the round, the 16th. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.